Hi, Elizabeth here. We recently hosted a session with our community members called Defense Against the Dark Charts, where I pose the question, do you think certain charts are inherently evil? Or is it we, the designers, who do evil things to them to make them less effective than they could be? What you'll see is some discussion around that topic, as well as some tips to arm yourself to avoid creating villainous graphs. I hope you enjoy learning about labeling issues. And with that, here is he who was not named. So starting off with labeling issues. Now, this commonly happens when we design graphs because we are so close to the data, right? We've spent so much time with it, likely more than our audiences have, that we forget or perhaps we think it's obvious to our, to our audience what we are showing. So let's actually all experience this through the lens of a particular example. Looks like this. So here's a graph, it's called pipeline update. We're comparing Q2 to Q3. And what I'd love for you to do is just maybe make some mental notes, study what you're looking at, and then share with us in the chat window, what questions do you have? What's confusing? Do you find yourself making some assumptions about any of the data that you're seeing? I have a lot of questions, including everything. everything. Douglas questions. wants to know what the pipeline <laughs> is. Uh, Lindia wants to know what the legend might be for the quarters. We see two different bars, two different colors, but what do they mean? Uh, Devlin wants to know what the y-axis means. It's just numbers. Uh, Robert, same thing. What are we measuring? Uh, Elizabeth is guessing that the dark green is Q2 and the light green is Q3 because that's sort of our natural construct of time moving from left to right, but we're making assumptions, we're guessing, we're confused, um, no grid lines, what's SBR? Yeah. There's a, one of the categories is just an acronym, uh, always a fun game to play, guess what the acronym means if it's an industry you're unfamiliar with. So sounds like we have a lot of questions here, Elizabeth. Yeah, and it's amazing how many questions we have over a very just simple graph, right? There's, uh, it's just a bar chart. We've got two periods of time, but without labeling, notice how nobody wants to really interact with this data much more because we have so many different questions, right? And so that's what we're doing when we assume that our audience knows what they are looking at, right? So the good news is this is a really easy problem to solve, right? These are all things we can easily overcome with some improved labeling. We're gonna start off with talking about the Q2 versus Q3 labels at the top. Now, uh, most of us are aware it is June of 2022. So Q3 has not happened yet. That has to be some sort of a forecast, right? So that's fine when we're talking about data that's existing in real time, but imagine if you were looking at this chart in the future, right? Flipping back through older decks that someone had created. We've done nothing to differentiate that at this point in time that that data is not yet real. So let's tackle that first. We could use unfilled bars to distinguish that. Um, I've also changed the labeling in the chart title to actually say that this is a Q3 forecast. That way there's no question at all uh, that this is not yet real data. Another option would be to use a gradient fill, uh, which is still provides that visual sense of uncertainty that we had with the unfilled bars. Now you'll also notice that I've cleaned up the wording in the chart title. I changed it from update to outlook. Uh, which is just a, a subtle tweak to prime you when you get to the data that this is going to be forward looking rather than backward looking. So let's improve our X axis now. Um, I am a fan of always labeling every axis. So if this is a particular channel that we're measuring, um, I want to make sure I label that in my X axis and also spell out the acronym SBR, small business reps, uh, because we actually have the space to do that here. Um, otherwise, your footnote is going to be a great place to address that if you don't have the space um, and not impact the legibility of the chart. So let's now improve upon our y-axis and not make our audience guess what metric this is, right? So we know that this is some sort of a pipeline, but is it sales? Is it number of deals, open opportunities, right? So what it turns out is it's actually the average number of days it takes to close a deal. So let's label that explicitly. 
So notice already what an improvement we have made, but just some very simple changes. So don't leave it up to your audience to guess what it is they're looking at. Always make sure your chart titles are labeled, your axes are labeled, you have a footnote um, as relevant to the, uh, to the data. And then the next thing we wanna talk about is um, data labeling, numeric labels within the bars themselves. So if you are going to um, include data labels, you just wanna make sure that you are using them with a purpose, meaning that your audience requires a level of specificity and that they align to the metric that is being plotted. So just for example, uh, you might choose to include data labels if your audience needs to know that the first bar is exactly 83, the second bar is exactly 145. Now, I would not recommend having all of the bars labeled and preserving the y-axis here because we have a sense of what the maximum and minimum range is already. Uh, but I am going to keep the y-axis here for illustrative purposes because I'm going to talk about some other very common uh, data labeling issues. Because what often happens sometimes in an effort to help our audience, we often start to add more data labels in anticipation of questions that we are going to get. Right. So let's assume our audience is going to ask us the question, well, what is that quarter over quarter change, right? The difference in the heights of the bars. So sometimes we start to add variations of the same metric within uh, the, the bars itself. So you now understand what these percentages represent, right? Because I just explained them to you. That's the difference in the height of the bars. But imagine if you received this graph for the first time. That would take a lot of work to figure out what those numeric labels uh, represent. And they're also redundant because that's visually encoded in the difference in the heights of the bars. So that's something we want to avoid uh, when it comes to labeling. Another thing that I think is worth saying is we want to avoid labeling data that is not plotted, which sounds funny, but I actually received a graph that looked like this in my prior banking days <laughs> where the, the data that was plotted was the current forecast, but the previous forecast was the one that the numeric data labels included. And that took me forever to finally figure that out. So just don't do that. You want to make sure if you're uh, labeling things that they align to what is actually being shown. We're actually starting to dip into this overcomplicating territory, which is where we are headed in our next adventure. But first, let's recap how we can arm ourselves against labeling issues. So chart titles, we want to make sure we explicitly label both axes, differentiate uh, forecasts, targets, goals from actuals, spelling out unfamiliar acronyms, and using intuitive labels.